Good day to you all and welcome back to the Eastern Block. And today I'm going to try and keep things simple. You see, I don't really have the means or the experience to, well, to properly produce an academic version or a professional version of a car review. I feel I, in the past episode, I feel I have tried too much to emulate uh, while established shows uh, while not keeping anything original. So before I get lost into any more banter, uh, here it is, the third generation Ford Focus. Actually, this is my third generation Ford Focus. And over the course of the next few minutes, I will try to briefly explain to you why I think this, th this is the perfect car, well, for a beginner automotive enthusiast, at least the type of enthusiast that uh, has a lot of facts uh, and is passionate about this automotive uh, world landscape but hasn't done too much on the practical side. He hasn't owned too many cars, uh, he hasn't fixed them or driven them too much. Well, guys like me actually, we, we need something to, to sink our teeth into first before we get to the really serious stuff. So without any further ado, let's get on with reviewing this car and we start with the looks. This is a rather a contrasting car. Actually, it's a bit bombastic and, well, I would expect this kind of wild design from an Italian or uh, maybe a French uh, car maker, but not from Ford. It's elegant, uh, it's not, but it's not that subdued and I'll try to explain to you why it's a bit wild. You have, the, you have these headlights straight away. To me, they look like bull's horns. They're very aggressive and pointed outwards and upwards. This uh, strange looking grill, which is rather big and also aggressive, intentionally so. Well, to me, the shape, the triangular and trapezoidal shape, well, it just looks like Darth Vader's mouthpiece. You have these exaggerated wheel arches, but along the sides you, you get this median line that sort of works with the design and brings the front and the back end uh, into, well, into harmony, really. The, the window area, the greenhouse, is nicely uh, balanced with the rest of the sheet metal and the proportions are just right so here we don't have anything spectacular i i might well i might add that they sort of mimic aston martin with this uh, with this uh, rather interesting trapezoidal shape right here the third window is clearly an inspiration from other coupe cars now things get pretty interesting in the back there, there are these, uh, well, well, the stoplights, they're rather uh, strange looking and they're also, I don't know, trapezoidal, pointy, uh, three-dimensional and, well, to me they look sort of like a boomerang, a stingray or something more alien altogether. I was thinking about those, uh, all those strange little creatures from the Half-Life video games and that's... Well, that's a quirky uh, reference for you. I don't know if you get it or not. At least that's what they look like to me. In the back, things begin to look a bit strange and striking again. There's the oval-shaped uh, rear window and the hatch, which are rather uh, elegantly masked by this spoiler. And also, if you can see, uh, this continues along the, the line of the... Uh, of the windows. It's interesting to see this curvature, this shoulder line, which was uh, previously present in mass-produced cars. Uh, I always think of the Volvo S60, the first generation S60, when looking at these shoulder lines. Uh, these are supposed to be typically Swedish design cues from furniture. That's what I've read before, so I'm just throwing it out there. And there's also so, sort of lines and creases everywhere to make the 
supposedly to make the car more aerodynamic but I suspect it's just to make it look uh, well pleasing to the eye to have some depth uh, there's a line here there's another line continuing here there's the wheel arch and so on then several creases and v-shapes along the side in the trunk things are rather uh, disappointing at least in terms of interior space and that's due to this rather massive um, d pillar here and it's and you see this rather interesting design cue this uh, rear hatch follows the cutout for this um, for this d pillar and it forms a rather uh, well a rather impossible looking v shape here um, well these are rather striking and uh, aggressively styled uh, design cues but I'm sort of pleasantly surprised that Ford decided to go this way I don't find it uh, I don't find it uh, uh, disappointing well the fact that there's not much interior space in the trunk it is striking as I've said but once you get close to it and you drive it you get used to this shape it's, it might be uh, a bit too wild for some but I think it's well it's just right for me one thing I don't really like is the way this uh, uh, hood to uh, windscreen ratio so you see the A pillar just meets almost over the the middle of the um, the front wheels it's well it's a characteristic of front wheel drive cars but it's nothing you can avoid maybe they could have pulled back the 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 a pillar a bit more it sort of looks like a van from this vantage point so i don't really find it attractive yeah the striking front uh, end uh, does uh, uh, does steer you away from this vision but but once you can see this uh, this ratio you can't really unsee it this car uh, features a 2 liter TDCI uh, engine it's, it's the, the 163 horsepower unit it uh, was uh, provided uh, by PSA I think for the while well, they worked together with PSA to provide this uh, engine it's not uh it's not very it's not very sonorous or melodious i don't know how to put it uh, more <laughs> eloquently yeah of course it's a diesel unit so it's not particularly desirable but it is potent and uh, very refined and i'll get to uh, explaining that once uh, i drive the car um other features that this car has uh, the well the much uh, appreciated uh, four-wheel independent suspension that Ford and particularly Focus models still uh, still use to this day although there's a bit of a caveat here I'd like to mention that the fourth generation fo Focus the one that precedes this uh, doesn't feature uh, independent suspension for all its models the lesser models have a, I don't know have a torsion bar or some of some sort I'm sorry for not um, documenting this fact uh, more eloquently but uh, this is just a mention so you can see that the focus lineage actually has lost a bit of its uh, well a bit of its uh, credentials at least in my opinion so i guess i won't be overly exciting excited to buying a, the next generation focus uh, other features of this uh, car well obviously it's a hatchback uh, in my opinion it should be preferred to the estate version that's a bit of a carrier uh, type of uh, car um, wagons are very popular in Europe but it wasn't my choice actually I uh, spent a lot of time searching for this car uh, in my uh, in my um, in my personal preference it had to be a manual a potent engine and a hatchback preferably black but uh, that was just a happy uh, a happy circumstance a happy coincidence to find it in black 
Uh, other uh, small bits uh, of mention here. I sort of replaced the wheels. I think these are from, um, I suspect these uh, rims are from the facelift version of the Mark III Focus. And I bought them, I bought them, um, I bought them second hand obviously, but I equipped it, I equipped the rims with new tires. So let's move on to the interior. Inside things are rather striking. Well, in accord with the rest of the car's design, actually. Uh, there are these interesting V-shapes uh, along the dashboard, uh, uh, right on top of the instrument cluster. And I know they, they are supposed to mimic uh, the dynamics and things like this, but to me, well, they sort of look like a fighter plane crosshairs. Uh, it's like you're pointing arrows at something and trying to shoot it very aggressive and subliminal. I don't know if anybody caught that, but at least to me they look because when you stay, um, when you're facing forwards, uh, well, you can't help but uh, look at these, uh, these uh, V shapes and uh, consider, consider them some targets. Interesting design cues are to be find, found everywhere. Uh, well, us Europeans are we aren't we aren't uh, very particularly impressed by these uh, uh, vertical uh, uh, heating vents and cooling vents, but um, I guess Ford decided to do that and borrow some design cues from American um, automotive um, trends. Uh, the commands. Uh, and the rest of the buttons are very well they're splashed around here they sort of make sense but uh, uh, they're actually quite difficult to use at first and there's a lot of um, things you have to remember but, but to me at least that's not something bad because i prefer muscle memory and uh, instant uh, tactile feedback i don't like uh, digital um, buttons, I don't like uh, touch screens and I don't like capacitive style buttons. I like a simple quick input when I press something. I want to have that, uh, that feeling that uh, I did something. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's, <laughs> that's how I see an interior, a car interior. Uh, bad things inside here, well, um, okay, the chrome uh, plating has started to peel off this uh, steering wheel bezel. Uh, it shows a uh, high lack in, uh, it shows a uh, huge lack in quality, at least on that uh, regard, in that regard. But other than that and the aggressively overly designed interior, um, I don't find any faults to this car. Actually, I sort of like it. It, it uh, sort of, uh, well, it uh, hugs you uh, and um, <laughs> there are things that really you can appreciate as a car guy. For instance, uh, the way this, let me just get the gear lever, the handbrake lever out of the way. The way this uh, gear lever uh, is positioned is uh, like, uh, it's like an homage to old sports and rally cars. You, do, you don't have to uh, remove your hand from the steering wheel too much to perform a shift. You just do it like this. Uh, it's sort of a nice way. I know Honda did it with the Civic several times, but Ford hasn't done it too much. Uh, interior quality here. Well, there are some bad uh, materials, some uh, hard, harsh materials low, below the middle line, but actually this car gives me the impression of higher quality uh, much, much higher quality compared to the previous uh, Ford Focus, the Mark II generation facelift. And I should know because I own one of those as well. And it was a low mileage car when I got it. So it was in a pretty good shape. If I could um, 
describe the Mark II Focus and uh, in a few words I'd say that when you drive it it is a bit twitchy it sort of buzzes and jumps around wherever you want it this is more mature more subdued uh, more refined more stable at high speeds uh, but I'll get to that um, when, once we start driving it well there are obviously parts that are lacking hard plastics are to be found lower down but the general feel is of uh, a GT Tourer uh, overly engineered car maybe and I'm going to give you an analogy just to get the feel of things because I don't know if everybody appreciates the Focus the way they should the first time I've drove this car it transported me back in time to the moment I first uh, I uh, got in the E39 5 series for the first time it's that general feel of quality and of uh, overly engineered the buttons knobs uh, insulation from the road uh, the back seats of a typical family hatchback are nothing to write home about and uh, in this regard the third generation focus is no exception the quality of the materials is, well, it's rather okay, but uh, disappointingly, uh, the door cards in the back are not of the same quality as the ones in the front. But in terms of practicality, there are some attempts made by Ford to provide some cubbies and spaces to, I don't know, to deposit your, uh, your water bottles and whatnot interior space is adequate this is my driving position and you can see my knees are actually touching the seat the front seat uh, but not in a bad way i don't feel cramped here i could withstand a couple of hours of driving in this car maybe even more than that five or six i think would be the limit because this is a titanium model there's also a uh, uh, middle seat uh, armrest which extends from the bench um, and also well uh, rather obvious uh, the cutout for this door might impair some taller people uh, getting in and getting out but um, I, I personally don't find it a problem okay the moment you have been waiting for driving the Ford Focus Mark III. Just open the window a bit. I'm not kind. Of, I'm not the air conditioning type of guy. Whenever I can use the windows opened, I tend to do so. Any first thoughts? Well, typical European hatchback front-wheel drive engineering. It feels very subdued and very easy to drive in town as i've previously uh, mentioned this uh, with other cars they well it's rather intuitive and nice to drive so uh, for a bit of city driving well it's a typical uh, as i've said it's a typical european front wheel drive setup but it's also a grand tourer of sorts it, this car well at least to me it feels bigger than uh, it feels bigger than it should it doesn't feel like a compact hatchback it actually feels like a, well at least like a mid-size saloon if not something bigger i find it quite strange it might be the norm in the class now because cars have gotten well technology has gotten more advanced and um has the the automobile has evolved quite a lot in the last few years but i'm not quite familiar with this sensation so i find it strange it's not displeasing in any way it's just something i noted in terms of power it offers plenty in the sense that you compare it with normal normal pedestrian lesser cars when you compare it to a full-on sports car of course this will come up short but when uh, hatchbacks and uh, boring old sedans in my country 
offer only 90 to 120 horsepower units suddenly having a light car with 163 horsepower on the tap means a lot more actually it's not fast off the line but it offers extraordinarily acceleration in everyday traffic so uh, 60 kilometers per hour to 100 happens just like that at least to me i know it sounds silly but you can't help but love a car that offers a bit of performance the brakes also feel upgraded compared to a normal focus I don't, it might be several things that are responsible for this it might be that this uh, car has upgraded brakes and suspension it might be the fact that it's well maintained or it might be the fact that uh, while estate versions are just uh, don't offer uh, the same level of excitement I think it's a combination of the three I I don't know for sure I couldn't find out for sure if this is this uh, um, particular model has uh, the optional I don't know sports pack or something like this but it sure it surely feels that way to me and remember I do drive another focus so actually I'm sort of in theme with what's going on with the Fords I'm not going to overhype them because I know that in the grand scheme of things they don't necessarily mean too much a warm hatchback is just another car but if you don't want to in invest too much in a car and you also want a daily driver this is the perfect way to start that okay so now let's sample a bit of twisties now I've hit 4000 rpm and I don't know if that can be heard on the on the microphone in the recording but well at least mine my at least my ears it sounded way better than any diesel I ever heard before also cornering speeds in this car are just insane when you start to when you stop to consider that this is actually a family car well I don't know they did something with the there's a trick differential of some sort or uh, I just find myself driving on twisty roads and catching up with every uh, single automobile on the road it just the handling is just superb is just superb it's not about straight on performance it's actually about uh, the way this car handles I guess that's all I can show you because I'm not really driving on a closed circuit so I can't really uh, break the speed limits can I plus there's no real reason to do so because I might be overselling the car if I'm uh, sort of uh, you know driving this point home too much it's not a sports car by any means but it's the step in the right direction uh, the mark ii gearbox unit was uh, precise but it was notchy grabby and it wasn't particularly fast this one is like a well-oiled machine it just works every time and it has that satisfying clicking uh, sensation when you engage different gears it's also perfectly matched with this engine it's a higher output engine so it, you have to travel within the gears to get within the gears to get the most most performance out of it but it does offer some it does offer a high level of satisfaction and you can really gun it uh, going over 100 kilometers per hour has never been more has never been easier at least for me because I was used to lesser cars so I think this is a great place to start when looking for a sports car fuel economy well that's a subject I'd rather not touch but I know some of you are curious 
to compare this with other diesel units. So I'm going to give you my personal figures, what I'm able to get out of it. It's going to do around 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers in highway or uh, out of city driving and a rather uh, well a rather alarming uh, 10 liters per 100 kilometers within city limits but this of course is dictated by the hours that you drive so if you drive in a slow traffic uh, uh, five o'clock Friday afternoon uh, scenario of course you're going to get uh, low MPG numbers if on the other hand you're only driving on Sundays or on weekends while well, you're going to get better numbers in town as well then again I do like to accelerate so I'm not really that sort of guy who uh, ex uh, who um, worries too much about uh, MPG figures. So that has been my take on this third generation Ford Focus. A warm hatchback. Turns out that if there are hot hatches, obviously, there are also warm hatches. For those of us who really want something fun to drive but are not so keen or don't have the availability to uh, spend some while well, a high amount of money to buy a purposeful sports car. Well, I truly hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, I'm looking forward to all your comments. Please like and subscribe. So see you in the next one.